Hello and welcome. In this session, we will see how to organize the literature that you have searched for and how to organize them electronically so that you can use it to retrieve them easily. First, we will look at the traditional method that most of us have been following for ages. This uses pen and paper using a separate hard bound book for your literature. When you find a particular article or a book, you take it down and write them down in serial numbered articles in your book. So, each article will have a unique number which is unique in your own sense. Now, under each article, you first write the bibliographic information which is the name of the author, the journal name, the volume and the page number. If it is a book, you write the name of the book, the title of the book, author, publisher and the year of publication. All these are important for you to come back to this book, locate the article later. Now, in a separate session, we have seen how to read a paper. In this, we saw that you could read the paper in three passes, first pass, second pass and the third pass. You could use this book to summarize your first pass notes. Once you have gathered a significant amount of literature, you use the last section of the book to organize the literature. In the last section of the book, you have various topics and subtopics. Under each subtopic, you list down the numbers. What are the numbers? These numbers are the same numbers that you have used to number the article at the first place. So, a particular article may come under various section heads or subsection heads. So, this way you have organized the articles under various categories. Now, you can use these categories as a starting point of your report. Let me now tell you about an electronic way to take notes. This is in contrast to the traditional way. You could use some of the convenient tools available in electronic softwares. So, during the first pass and the second pass reading, when you read a particular paper on a computer, you highlight important sentences either in PDF using Adobe Acrobat or there are other software such as PDF Exchange Viewer or Android applications on a tablet. Now, you need to transfer these highlighted sentences to a word processing software. It could be Google Docs, LibreOffice or Word. Now, in your word processing software, you have these topics arranged serially. So, you could have topics and then subtopics and within each topic, you organize the references in ascending year of publication and this is important as it helps you picture which came first. So, once you have done these topics, all you need to do is go back to this PDF copy and paste the name of the file that you have downloaded. It is very important to also include the DOI number. The DOI number stands for document object identifier and it uniquely identifies a particular document on the web. So, it is useful to keep this DOI number and the name of the file. The DOI number is increasingly being used by a lot of journals when you submit the article for publication. And then you copy and paste the highlighted sentences in the PDF file. So, copy those sentences and paste them in each of these topics under the bibliographic information. So, this helps you keep all the notes in one place and the notes since they are electronic documents, you can have very large files all organized in one place. 
it is also helpful to do this in organizing your literature. Let me show you a simple example. Here I have a topic, here is another topic. Now under each topic, I have listed the author name, the name of the file and the DOI number, the document object index number. Now since this is an electronic file, when I and this is a link and I can click on this link to directly take me to the file on the web. And below each article, I just use the notes which I have copy and pasted from the PDF file. Now when you come back to this and when you read them, it will be a good summary for you to read the important lines that you have highlighted, which otherwise is difficult to read from a long paper. You could also include some important images or figures and plots or equations in this notes. But very important that you should remember that never use these lines later without modifying or paraphrasing. It is considered a bad ethic in scientific communication to copy and paste some other sentences and claim it as our own. It is called as plagiarism. But for your own purposes, it is okay to have it exactly verbatim as it was cited because it is only for your purposes that you want to read this and understand what these authors have done in this work. Now let us see a simple way to name the collection of files that you have downloaded, which I call it as naming a PDF file. This is not the only way. But this is some way which some of us use and you can try this or something else similar to this. Now why do we want to file names in a particular way? The key information in a file are the year of publication because you want to know which came first and the keywords. Now when you have a folder containing a lot of files, if you were to simply use the title which most of us do for the first time, it is difficult to understand which came first and which is important. Instead, you could follow a syntax like this. The file name consists of 1, 2, 3, 4 parts. The first part in LO is the year, then an abbreviation of the journal or the book name, followed by the starting page number. This can be followed by keywords or author name if the author is famous and so on. Now, as an example, this particular article was published in year 1999. Now, an abbreviation for the journal COCIS stands for Current Opinion in Colloidal and Interfacial Science. It could be anything. Similarly, I have picked up a couple of keywords from the topic, lipid origin and this person, Louisi, happens to be Nobel laureate, is famous. So I would like to in include a word saying that this is an important work. Now why do we do it like this? Because it helps us in avoiding duplicates. Now, the year of publication, journal name and page number uniquely identifies most of the articles. So even if you have downloaded a particular article sometime before and every time you use a different convention, you will have multiple copies of the file. Instead, if you always follow one consistent notation like this, year, journal abbreviation and page number, you can make sure that when you look at a list of files in your folder, you know that there is a duplicate or not. There are some alternate ways to store bibliographic information or organize bibliographic information. They are provided by software such as Mendeley and Zotero. Mendeley also has a facility to automatically download the bibliographic information and convert it into various formats such as 
BibTeX, EndNote and so on. Zotero also provides a similar facility and both of them have a cloud based support where you can share the documents with your group or your friends. Thank you for listening.